Welcome to the second episode of our series uh, about uh, animation in 3ds Max. My name is Arnold Faller. Uh, and you see where we previously ended uh, the first episode. If you missed it, you should definitely check it out. I'm going to link it up here on the top right for you guys. Today, we're going to explore a few more possibilities of animation and therefore I'm going to delete everything we did so far and I'm also going to switch into a top view with T for top and I'm also going to turn on the grid so that we can see our animation a little bit better. So um, the first thing is uh, we're going to start with repeating what we did by to, in order to create a simple animation which we're going to edit later on. So uh, I'm going to start again with a simple box at the bottom right corner and to create a simple animation I am taking the box and I'm creating a couple of keyframes in my current time length from 0 to 100. So to do that uh, hit Auto key, I select a point in time so I'm going to do it in 25 frame steps, so 0, 25, 50, 75, 100 and I'm gonna weirdly moving my object around. So Auto key is turned on, 25 is, uh, is selected in time and then I'm gonna move it uh, to the bottom right. Then I'm continuing adding new keys, I don't have to turn Auto key off for that, I'm just moving to a different point in time and I'm moving it to the top left and at 75 I'm moving it to the top right and now in order to get a loop that I have a zigzag movement on my screen I'm gonna choose my the, the keyframe for 100 I would like to have the same one as at frame zero so that the movement is continuing to uh, to end where it started so in order to get the second key here at the end I'm selecting key the key from number zero and while holding the shift key I'm gonna move it from zero to 100 so that means now if I hit play and I'm gonna I, I, I brought it back to the beginning I have the movement zigzag and it ends where it started and so it looks like a continuous movement there. We're not going to stop there. We now we are now going to add a few more keys because we now want to have a little bit more complex animation and we're not only animating movement. The next thing is we're going to animate rotation. So I'm just what when whenever I need to change something, I'm going to change the rotation angle. Right now the rotation angle is zero at the beginning, so I'm hitting Auto key and I'm now recording rotation angles. Uh, you can either record them directly on top of the of the of the keys for, for movement, or you can record it at any time. I will do both. I will record my first rotation angle here on top of the so on 25. Uh, if you want to have rotation angle snaps in 5 degree snaps you should turn on the angle snap um, uh, toggle here and then you have rotation angles of 5 degrees and you can also read the uh, the angle right here at the yellow text. So I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise then I'm going to 50 where I am gonna rotate it 180 degrees clockwise. It doesn't matter how much you do. I just weirdly rotate it. The next key I'm not gonna placing, I'm placing directly on the key there but uh, let's see 90 degrees more uh, clockwise. As I said it doesn't matter. Then I go to 90 and I bring it back uh, 195 degrees and at the end I'm going to bring it back to its uh, yeah, original rotation. Auto key off. So now I have already a lot of keys and you can see that the move key, movement keys, let me turn off auto key, the movement keys which are red and the rotation which are green, so RGB, red, green, blue. Um, now if I hit play you see that my object not only rotates but it also 
uh, not only moves, but it also rotates according to the keyframes that I made. And in addition to that, I am doing a little bit more. I'm animating one more thing, and that is the scale of the objects. So I'm making slightly larger, slightly smaller, so that we have a kind of complex animation. Auto key on, and this time I am going to do put my put my keys wherever I want. So here's one. The scale tool is, I'm going to scale it down at frame 40. I'm scaling it up again. So just at any, it doesn't matter where you place your keys, just to get a complex animation and to make my point. At the end, I'm going to bring it back to its original size. How can I do that? Either by copying the key, I could do that later, or I move my time to 100. Auto key is, of course, on. If I make a right mouse click on select and scale, it opens a type in window and you can type in the scale. For example, you can uh, bring it back to 100, 100, 100. And that is the uh, starting scale that we had. So now my scale also ends at 100 at the end. Okay, so now what is my point? My point is when I have an object that has a lot of animation, you can see down here, it's quite complex, the colors, okay, you can still tell which are the movement keys and so on. But now if I want to start to move those keys in time a little bit to, to adjust my animation, it is quite hard to always get the right one. And that's why when um, working with keys doesn't work anymore just in this small timeline here. That's why we have a different tool for that. And this is the first thing that I would like to introduce as something new here today. And that is the uh, so-called curve editor or dope sheet. Uh, to open the curve editor or dope sheet, you'll find up here is a button um, that has the sign curve on it and it opens the curve editor. And you can see it already is much more complex. I would like to start, uh, the, 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 uh, the curve editor comes in two, two different, uh, in two different forms as the curve editor that we see right now or, and when you go to editor, you can switch to something called dope sheet. Um, if you don't see anything in your curve editor or in your dope sheet, you have not selected your animated object. So you need to have your animated object selected. And in the dope sheet, we're gonna start with the dope, oops, it automatically, uh, automatically snaps to the corner. Uh, in the dope sheet, you now have the same arrangement of keys as we had it before here in our timeline. So you got the timeline here. There's a ruler, which you can, by the way, move from zero to 100. That's my timeline. Here is my time slider. So you can also slide it and see the movement. But the big advantage is in the dope sheet, you can expand the parameters. And here is a little plus that you can go from box to transform. All the transform keys are red, green, and blue. And all the object keys, which means like object parameters, size, height, uh, all the materials and so on, they're all uh, gray. Let's go to transform. And when I open transform, I can um, separately deal with rotation, with position, and scale. So in this, it's much simpler to select a certain key and move it separate move for example uh, position separately from um, from the uh, from rotation what is what is what is what are the white keys so those are blue those are the three re um, move uh, position rotation and scale and above it is the transform key that means it's uh, it is white but it, it's the sum of all the others. And above it is the total animation for the box. So uh, that's why we have all those white keys because whenever there is a, a key down here, you will automatically get one for this. So uh, for example, if you move this, all the bottom keys would follow. If you move one of the white ones, all the bottom keys would follow. Moving keys in the dope sheet is no problem. You just select them and move them to a different point in time. If you want to copy a key, just like we did down here in the, in the timeline, you can only copy or shift copy, shift move objects when they are 
expand it. So for example, my scale key, I can take it and shift, move it and I'll get a copy. I'm going to delete the key right away. If I want to do the same thing with rotation, I'll find out that shift moving it does not create a copy. Why? Because it is still not expanded to uh, all the way. So I have to open rotation and then I'll see my X, Y and Z rotation keys and I can now select them and also shift move them and create a copy. So only when they are expanded all the way so that there's no plus here you can um, create uh, copies by using shift and move. Okay, so much for the uh, simple version of the of the curve editor, the so-called dope sheet. And now I'm going to have a, a quick look at the curve editor itself. Uh, curve editor just looks a little bit more complex, but basically it's the same thing. Uh, but this time we don't have the keys arranged nicely um, from top to bottom. This time they are arranged according to their values. And I'm going to take my ruler here and move it down a little bit. So from uh, left to right on the x-axis we have the timeline from 0 to 100 and up and down we are having uh, we are having the values of those keys so uh, now it's not, uh, some of the some of those curves might uh, might uh, be too too large for your values so you not only can not only can you uh, not only can you uh, use your pan movement to zoom in and zoom out, but there's also uh, to to pan move it. But there's also two buttons here that allows you to um, zoom to the extents of your curves, and then you get a nice overview. So um, not only do you have uh, the curves visible here, for example, I'm going to concentrate on the red curve only. So here in position X. No, let's take something simpler. Let's take the scale value. So if I take a look at the scale value, just uh, unclick all others and only click at scale, you only see the curve, how the scale develops. So it starts at 100% and then it's scaled down smaller, it's scaled up a little bit larger and up and down and it ends at 100. So uh, in this view, in the curve editor view, you can now select those keys and move their value. So you're not moving it in time. Oops, I um, opened the scale also. Edit, undo. Sorry, edit, undo. Um, in order to get X, Y and Z, you have to select them with a window. And then, because even scale is actually three values. It's an X, Y and Z scale. In order to scale those uniform uh, you have to select it with a window and move it up. So that is one thing that you can do quite nicely in the curve editor, you can adjust it. Also you can adjust the handles for those curves and edit, undo and yeah, adjust it. So let's go to something else, for example here, uh, position X, Y and Z. I'm going for, uh, for position X and uh, if I want to make, um, if I want to adjust the ingoing and outgoing handles of one of the curves, position X, because position X is a single value, it reacts quite simply. So in this one, you can just take the handle and adjust it. So this is the way the speed uh, changes at the, at the key. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the position to a linear curve, or better it's not a curve. If the movement is linear, then it should be a straight line between the curves, uh, between the points and no curve. To turn it into a straight line, uh, there's different ways. You can just could take the handles and adjust it till it's almost a straight line, but then you have the problem that you uh, have to uh, bend it here. What I did is to turn the curve into a uh, Bezier corner, I hold it the shift key, but it's much better to do it in a different way. The best way is to select one key here and then do a right mouse click on it. Because the right mouse click reveals all the information that is stored here in this key. First, it is at time zero. The value is 150, that is 
my, uh, sorry, minus 150. And then you can see the ingoing and outgoing uh, handles which are uh, just automatically smoothed. So what you can do is you take the outgoing handle and turn it into linear. That is the second one from top. It looks like a rubber band uh, straight from the point. So I'm going to take the outgoing handle and turn it linear. Now I'm going to switch to the next point. You can either select the next point and then you see it here or you can use those little arrows to jump from one to the next and at the at key number two at uh, 26 I'm going to go go the take the ingoing handle and also turn it linear. Uh, no, you, not, no, have, you don't have to do it for every key. You can also use those little arrows here, which means the same way the handles are handled here uh, will be turned over to this. And here's also to the next one. And then you can just jump to the third and here to the fourth. Oh, uh, it's not, I have to do it by hand here. Then at the last one and we are already here at our fourth room. So in this way, the movement is now is now linear. But be aware, the the movement is only linear in x position because I just did x. And if I look at y, it is still a curve. So and c is a, is a straight line because we did not move it up or down. So we also have to do the same thing in y position so i'm gonna do a right click and i'm gonna switch the handles all to linear and number four is also oh this is one more um is there one more no five five yes did the other one have one two three four five did i do the last one yeah it's linear yes only one okay so now x and y position are all turned linear that means if i take a look and i'm going to close my um, close my uh, view and if i take a look now at my movement please ignore the rotation and the scaling if possible but you can see that the movement is really linear that means for our perception it looks as if it's much faster than the corners in fact it's only a linear speed between uh, the corners it's not slowing down or speeding up as it did before okay so this is how we adjust the ingoing and outgoing animation let's do it a little bit uh, let's do it with a simpler animation I'm not this was a quite complex one uh, you don't you don't need to uh, you don't need to throw it away what you can do is you can take the object and do a right click select the object do a right click and hide it so I hide it the animated object and now I'm gonna make a new one and in this case I'm going into a 3d view and I'm going to create a box with a certain height because now what I would like to animate here from 0 to 100 is the height of my box. The height of my box um, here right now it's around 50. Let's go for 10 as a start value and the end, the end value should be 100. So I'm going to animate it to go from 0 to 100, uh, sorry, from 10 to 100 in 50 till frame 50. So I'm going to animate it by turning out to key on, choose frame 50 and now switch the height from 10 to 100. And then at the end of my animation, I'm going to switch the animation back to 10. When you create keyframes other than move, rotate and scale, you do it directly in the value here. And you now can see those little red brackets that you get around the spinner of the height. The spinner is these little uh, arrows up and down. Um, uh, that shows you that this is a keyframe. So when I'm not on a keyframe, uh, you can see there's no red brackets, but when I'm on a keyframe, like here at 50, and you can see that's a keyframe for the certain value. Basically, in 3ds Max, every, va every value that has, oh, every parameter that has a value, like here, 
length width height length segment width segment and so on can be animated every one of those what you cannot animate is something like a button if you have a, a button like this to turn it on and off that cannot be animated out to key off so here is my simple animation that takes the height moves it up and down so we're going to create a pumping uh, box you can see that the movement is not linear the movement is slowly increasing and and let's look at the movement in uh, in the curve editor for the height of my object so I'm going into curve editor select your box that's important uh, box number two and what is animated it's box number two it's not its transform so I'm gonna ignore that here is object and here is the object height let's hit those two buttons to make it uh, maximize it to the window so here's my height changing slowly and then getting tall and then reaching the top and then going down so it's not a so it's a sine curve or a part of a sine curve uh, mirrored one so um, in, in order to turn this linear I have to take the first key right mouse click to open the uh, to open the parameter parameter per, parameter box and then take the outgoing and turn it over to linear and then transfer the same value over to the next point with the arrow sorry then move to second and transfer it over to here and to here and now we have all linear movements of the height uh, that looks a little, little different when we play it it's it's a linear movement up and down so and of course you can create any cost custom curve that you want if you once turned your handle to linear and let me open the curve editor again so here is my object box height once it's turned to linear you can anytime select one of those points you don't have to go all the way in with a right click you also have buttons up here to create see set tangents to uh, uh, to automatic or to whatever see, uh, ease curve linear and so on or you can simply do it by turning the in and out to uh, those two the ones with the handle so and once you turn them in once with handle you can anytime oops I picked the wrong one automatic so there it is and here it is you can also do as I mentioned before with uh, the shift key can convert it with a shift key so you can have any you can have any um, curve here I want to have a, a, a fast curve that's fast starting or you can select it and take a slow ease curve and it's slowly getting up and so on, and so, on. so different ways of how the movement of the height is it slowly gets up and then it's uh, it's more like a logarithmic curve it gets faster towards the end okay and the last thing that I would like to end here with the, our topic uh, using the curve editor to adjust every single keyframe the last thing is um, I would like to create automatic curves and automatic curves here in the curve editor but before we do this I'm going to show you something else if you have a certain animation on your for example my height is animated but nothing else my width and my length is not animated if you have a special animation curve on one thing for example the height you can also select the height do a right click copy and you can paste your animation to a different um, value for example the width right click paste I'm gonna paste it as a copy and there it is so now both height and width have the same curve uh, that of course changes the form of the box dramatically because now also the width is following the animation so animation curves can be copied in uh, 
sorry, I hit the wrong button, that takes a while. So I stopped it. So here it is. Um, so I copied width and height. The same way that you copied width and height, you can also uh, delete the animation again. How do you delete an animation? Uh, for uh, for example, and you uh, for example, you just start here at the end, and you delete every single point. As soon as you have only one point left, it's not an animation anymore. It's a constant value over the whole time. So I've started from the back, deleting my values, and uh, there it is. So now I have one value uh, for for my width. So, but what I wanted to show you is my height animation width is gone, and here is height. Um, my let's give my height a different animation than the one is done here. I'm gonna do a right click on on the uh, on the height, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign a controller. So a controller that takes control of the value of the height. So assign controller and Right now it has a Bezier float, so it's a curve that can be adjusted. Um, we're gonna apply the last one, waveform float. It automatically applies a waveform that follows certain parameters. So waveform float, okay. And here it is. When you open the waveform float, you will get a little window that allows you to control the waveform. Here, when you, uh, when you zoom out, you can see right now how the waveform looks like. So it automatically created this sine curve. Right now we have a sine curve with a period of 10. So every 10 uh, frames it will continue. That's really fast. Let's do a period of uh, 25. So now it's a slower curve. Um, the amplitude is how wide it swings. It's like a pendul pendulum and it swings 100 units in each way. I don't want an amplitude of 100, I just want an amplitude of 50, but I want it to be above zero. So here is a, a few buttons and for example automatically above zero. Or you can also do it manually. Now it's 50 from 0 to minus 50, plus 50, minus 50, plus 50. So what I want is, I want a plus 60. Oh, sorry, minus, that's not minus, just 60. So it is an amplitude of 50, but it goes from 10 to 110 to 10 to 110. That sounds good, because that is what I did before, and now I have an an automatic pumping of my object from height 10 to 110, 10 to 110. If you want to make it faster, you can anytime adjust the waveform at that you have at the height simply by double clicking the height. So if you double click it, it opens the same window again. For example, if you don't want the wave, the, the sine curve, you can also use a square a uh, curve that looks like this. What's the difference? Now it will not slowly jump up and down, but it will just give you full height, no height, full height, no height. Okay, so play around with it. Play with the possibilities that you have in the waveform. Um, height, double click, you can all try uh, different forms here and create an automatic curve for an animation. Okay, I hope that was um, that was clear. So we played with the curve editor and the dope sheet at the beginning. We tried the same in the same way working with keys than we did before down here in the timeline. We edited, we um, adjusted the ingoing and outgoing handles for every for every curve. Uh, we tried copy pasting animation from one value to another, from the height to the width, and so on. And at the end, we created this kind of automatic animation by applying a waveform controller. Uh, how did that work? I made a right click and I went to assign controller and I assigned the waveform controller, which I then adjusted the parameters. Okay, thanks for your attention. I hope you uh, that was uh, that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.